Good evening. I'd like to introduce you all to this very special Halloween episode of Late to the Game. What? Is it Halloween today? Uh. Hey. What? Is it Halloween? What? Is it Halloween? No, it's Tuesday. No, no, is it Halloween? What? Is it Halloween? No, it's me. Okay, cool. Thanks. Wait. What? Can you help me with this? It's really no, hard. No, just, just keep just just keep digging. I thought it'd be appropriate to take a look at a game with a little bit of Halloween creepiness with it. So I thought it'd be a great idea to check out the 2007 classic, Bioshock. Well, I guess he's late to the game. That was, that was in the script. I, uh, I just never got around to playing it. Bioshock is developed. <laughs> Why do I always f*** it up at the beginning? <laughs> Bioshock is developed from 2K Games, and it brings you back to the year 1960, where our main protagonist, name I don't remember, is in a plane that gets brought down, and it seems he's the lone survivor. You're immediately part of the action, and you have to swim to safety. All you see is the lone lighthouse. When you arrive there, you're led to a bathysphere, which leads you down to the underwater city of Rapture. On the way down to Rapture, we're greeted with a short informational video about Andrew Ryan, who wanted to build a city underwater for a group of elitists to thrive. As you descend, you get a transmission from Atlas, who's heading the rebellion against Ryan. The city of Rapture was creating a genetic material called Adam, which is being produced in the stomachs of orphaned little girls. They're called Little Sisters. Another being was created to protect the Little Sisters called Big Daddies. This isn't a BDSM thing, I swear. Adam basically gives you superpowers in the forms of plasmids. You pump them into your veins. Rapture was put into despair as a dystopia when Atlas ordered an attack on Ryan and the battle left with most people dead. Now we have Splicers, which are plasmid soldiers, which are there to make your day not great. And the big daddies and the little sisters roaming around Rapture, almost zombie-like. <laughs> now, you're on your way to defeat Andrew Ryan and help out Atlas's cause. Oh, my mom's calling me. <laughs> Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm good. What's going on? I'm filming a video. Oh. Yeah. Alrighty. I'll talk to you later. Alright, love you. Love you too, honey. Bye. Bye. <laughs> it's a first person shooter, but it adds in fun elements of plasmids and level ups. We'll talk more about that in the gameplay section of this video. Can we do that? Can we just reference the fact that this is a video? Hey, this is a game from 2007, and it doesn't look half bad. I was looking at some comparison videos between the remastered version and the normal old like 360 PS3 version, and there's not a lot of differences. And you know what? I don't think that's really a bad thing. The game's aesthetic really does help it be timeless at points. Between the environments, the characters, the enemies, weapons, it definitely feels slightly stylized but still keeps an element of realism in there. There's a few moments in the game where things do feel a little off because it's an older game from two generations ago at this point, but overall, I would definitely give it two thumbs up. I don't think it would be weird to go on a diatribe about how cool this world looks and feels, because Bioshock really is an important video game in the timeline of gaming as a whole. It's part due to its visuals. The Big Daddies are a terrifying enemy that always gives you a wave of dread whenever you see one. <laughs> because, you know, it's going to be a tough fight just based on how they look. They're in full heavy armored scuba gear, 
and they make these weird ass sounds. They almost remind me of a beefed up Captain Cutler from the Scooby-Doo cartoons. The Little Sisters are the epitome of creepy little girl. The way that they talk to the big daddies and call them Mr. Bubbles, f***ing terrifying. Cooper, bleep out f We don't say f on this show, okay? They just give this dichotomy of innocence, but then harvesting Adam from these dead bodies. <laughs> I hate it. The world of Rapture is beautiful. It was meant to be a utopia. There's this 40s aesthetic of gold everywhere, kind of like the Great Gatsby. It's a show of all the wealth and elitism. And of course, it's all underwater, which you walk through these tubes and see this underwater city, which is all disheveled. The only game that I can kind of compare it to is Fallout. And this predates the first 3D Fallout game by a full year. I think it deserves a really big shout out to the game's art director, Scott Sinclair. This is the part of the game where I think it really stands out. Yes, it does have the typical first person shooter tropes, but there's a lot that makes it different. And the first one is the introduction of plasmids. As we talked about before, the plasmids are created from Adam, which basically gives you superpowers to do different things. You have the power of telekinesis, incineration, electrobolt. You can even hypnotize a big daddy to fight off other baddies for you. They're of course used to figure out puzzles and progress, but they also become super useful in combat. Speaking of combat, I think one of the most clever uses in this game is how they map the controller. When you're shooting, you're using the right trigger, and when you're using your plasmids, you're using the left trigger. It's just one of those things that make you feel a little bit more immersed in a game. It makes you feel really powerful. Like you're using the gun in one hand and you're using the plasmids in the other hand, as it's represented in the game, and it just really feels good. I didn't even write that. That was all improv, baby. As you get more plasmids and level up throughout the game, you start to feel like a real badass and you feel like a superhero shooting up all these weirdos. Like we talked about before, you need Adam to level up in the game. And of course, that comes from the little sisters in the game. You can either choose to harvest the little sisters or rescue them. Of course, harvesting means it will kill the little sister, but you will get the maximum amount of Adam from her. If you rescue her, you don't get as much Adam, but you'll be rewarded later on by Dr. Tenenbaum, who is keeping the little sister safe after the Adam gets drained from them. Now, I don't know if I'm bad at games, but I died a lot. It didn't matter how leveled up I was or what the plasmids I used, it was quite often that I died. The good thing about this is that when you get sent back to the Vita Chamber, I'm resurrected and can continue on with the battle. The good thing about this is that it saves the progress that you made. So if a big daddy was down to a quarter health, He's still going to be at quarter health when you come back to him. That's really good for somebody who sucks as much as I do. Another really cool thing about big daddies is that they won't fight you unless they're instigated. The only reason that you may want to fight them is if you want to rescue a little sister that's following them, or if you just need to level up to loot them. I just think that's pretty neat. I already gushed about the art design and the aesthetic of the game in a previous section, so I'm not going to go too in-depth here. But the environment you're in is so freaking cool. You're in an underwater city, and you go from place to place in these tubes everywhere, and you can see everything underwater. It's really one of the best cool things about this game. The game is split up into 16 chapters, and each chapter doesn't really feel distinct from each other. There's some story beats that changes things up, but you're really just exploring different buildings in this underwater city. There's medical facilities, farmers markets, theaters. They just look damp and dark and deserted, sometimes flooded. All this really gives a creepy vibe that just feels super dystopian. Because when there's a utopia, you know there's a dystopia right around the corner. There's some pretty neat missions here. The game is linear as heck, so somebody who gets lost in a lot of big games, this one included, there's a lot of times where there's a big arrow showing you where to go or there's just one direction to go in. When you gotta go back for searching for something, it's a little easy to get mixed up, but I don't think it's as bad as some other games I've gotten completely lost in. 
I think my favorite mission in the game is when you're being a hitman for Sander Cohen, who's an artist. You bring him these people he wants dead and he poses them up on stage as this big art piece. You get rewarded as you go along and it's fun and memorable. There's another one involving a big daddy later in the game that I don't want to spoil. It's really fun and I think this game is important enough in the history of video games that if you haven't played it, you probably should. I think it's safe to say here that there's two different ways that you're getting story out of this game. The first one is the narrative that you're getting throughout the entirety of the game. And then there's the lore. I'm sure super fans of the game could probably talk about hours about the lore of Rapture and Bioshock, not even get into what's explored in the sequels. And from what I found out from playing the game, I do find super interesting. But it's incredibly rare for me to go into any sort of lore with a world with any type of medium that I'm investing my time into. I think the only deep dive that I've really taken is the Harry Potter series. I'm not even that versed with it, but you know, yeah. I find the world of Rapture fascinating and rich with history, but you don't need to get super into it to enjoy the game or the narrative of the game. I went over it pretty briefly in the beginning of this video. You go into Rapture, you talk with Atlas, and he wants you to kill Andrew Ryan, so you're on a mission to do so. I'm gonna go into some pretty big spoilery things that if you don't want to be spoiled, go to this time code in the video and uh, it'll get to the conclusion of the video. But I'm, uh, I'm gonna oh, talk freely about some big plot points of the game. When you get to Andrew Ryan, he basically reveals to you that you're being mind controlled by saying the words, would you kindly, and any action. Ryan tells you that you're a slave that obeys and he orders you to kill him. Because a man chooses, a slave obeys. It's a pretty powerful section where he's basically telling you to kill him. Now, who's mind controlling me? Atlas, of course. The dude has been telling you to do stuff from the very beginning of the game. Atlas, who's really Frank Fontaine, says something that basically is a self-destruct button for the protagonist, and he's ready to kill you off. Luckily, Dr. Tenenbaum saves you, and Fontaine can no longer control you. There's this whole section of the game where you have to get parts to make yourself into a big daddy, which is the part of the game that I was talking about earlier. And you become one and walk around with a little sister who's harvesting Adam from these splicers. It was a really cool part of the game, which was unfortunately the last really cool part of the game. Because you get to Frank Fontaine and he just kind of injects himself with a bunch of Adam and then he's the final boss. But it only took me like three tries. But like... <sighs> I can't really complain because uh, like I said before, I'm a very bad at video games and three tries, that's like a godsend. <music> Bioshock was always a franchise name that always intrigued me, but never enough that I knew it was something I needed to play. When I came up with late to the game, I always knew that I should put this pretty early on in the priority because I knew it's something that fans absolutely adore and it's a really big franchise. And as I found out, I understand now why it's so important. Overall, I really did enjoy the game. There were some moments that I felt were a little too long, the story didn't super entice me, but I did really enjoy the environments and the characters. I wasn't super in love with it all, but I am really happy that I sunk my teeth into it. I'm actually interested in playing the sequels even though I heard that they don't really hold up to the original Bioshock. Well, I guess that's it for this spooky episode of Late to the Game. Stay safe everyone, and have fun trick or treating! Alright, f*** it. Happy Halloween everyone!